We love spending this time with you. Thank you for listening. If you would like to take your listening experience to the next level, did you know there's a way to do that, Jabo? I do. Yep, you know how you do it. You go to the tjshow.com, you sign up for the TJ Show newsletter, and you get cool things dropped right into your inbox, like the TJ Show's 10 shares. We pick 10 different things, everyone on the team does it, that we think you're going to love. It's not just about our show. This no. is about like stuff, music we're listening to, whatever it may be. Life stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot more in there. Sign up at the tjshow.com. This is the TJ Show. As you get to know me, you very quickly realize I do have a coffee addiction, but I'm totally fine with it. TJ well, has a problem. Well, no, it's not a problem. I love it. I love being addicted to coffee. You drink like three cups a day. That's a problem. Yeah, no? it's wonderful. I mean, who doesn't <laughs> love great coffee? I have a threshold. I can't go over a certain amount. You start to feel a little weird. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think you're concerned about me. Apparently, um, our camera guy, Josh, is concerned about me because he has a friend who he found out was sent to the emergency room because he drank too much coffee. Now, of course, that peaks my radar. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Sent to the, like, how much did he have? And so you did an interview with him. Yeah. I think he overdid it a little bit. I mean, three cups a day versus what (laughs) he got himself into. Listen to this. You did an interview because you're concerned for me. I am. Michael. Yes. You were telling me a story the other day. You found yourself in the emergency room because of coffee? Yeah, this is crazy. So I was about 23 years old. Yeah, wound up in the cardiac care unit with what I thought was a heart attack. And after a weekend in the uh, CCU, they determined that it was a little bit too much caffeine in my life. How much caffeine did it take to do all that? Um, One to two dozen cups of coffee. Okay, one to two dozen cups of coffee. That's a wide range (laughs) Mm -hmm. of coffee. You're working your way there. Three, pretty close. I am at three, Mm. and I know it's three. That's the gateway. It's not three to 24. It's (laughs) I do three. Sometimes I miss one, and I only get two. There's a big difference here. Just cups of coffee and Diet Cokes and Diet Pepsis and all. So you add all that up in the course of a day. Um, yeah, the, the actual diagnosis was that the secondary nodes of my heart were firing and causing one chamber to fire empty. Yeah, you don't have to worry about me with this, Josh. I, I mean, don't know. I- it starts somewhere, TJ. <laughs> it, it's not like he came out of the womb drinking this much coffee. Right. Okay, so you're saying I'm working my way up to this and you don't want me to go there. I'm scared okay, for you. Fair enough. No, I'm taking note. And so it felt like chest pain. Two dozen cups of coffee? Yeah, at the most. But between one and two dozen. By the way, when you get to coffee number 13, how do you keep (laughs) going for another? You said it, though. It tastes so good. It Mm -hmm. does, but that's a lot of coffee. You know, you have the first couple when you wake up. You know, just enjoy yourself. But you know what? College kids do the same thing today, right? With the energy drinks. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, energy drinks has taken caffeine drink into a whole different place. You know, they've got caffeine in them. They've got energy. And, and well, some young people have died yeah. from yeah. energy drinks, mm-hmm. overdosing. Yep. Yeah, my mom warned me about yeah, that. I'm stuff. like, Mom, that's not what I'm doing. I, don't, I only drink coffee and water. So it, did, it didn't do any, you know, real permanent damage. But, yeah, it did shock me. Yeah, well, I appreciate you bringing this to my attention, Josh. Yeah, of course. It, see, this guy really cares about me. I yeah. do. Yeah, well, I hope this guy starts to incorporate water into his uh, intake because yeah. that's a lot of caffeine. Apparently he has. He learned his lesson. I mean, I think Good. it just takes one time you go to the emergency and you go, mm-hmm. okay, I went up in the emergency room. It's time to cut it back a yeah. little bit. I don't need one time. I'm going to listen to his story and go from there. All right, yeah. very good. Uh, you know, I felt bad the other day. I, I tried to push some coffee on Jabo, and it's not what I normally mm-hmm. do, but I felt like you were having a tough day, yeah. and I was like, hey, I don't want to be a drug pusher, but here, I made you some <laughs> coffee, and you rejected it. I did. I almost Great. took it. I wow. almost took it. Great willpower. Yeah. Because I, I love coffee, but yeah. Lately, I've been trying to pull back. And so when you offered me a cup, I was like, oh, <laughs> no, thank you. Then I felt so bad because you made it. it no, was fresh. I, I shouldn't have done that. And I was so happy you said no because I got to drink right. it. It was you, wonderful. You were like, it's okay. I'll drink it. It was my second cup. I'm like, okay. There it is. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. And I know we've got a bunch of teachers tuning in every day. And we are so grateful for the work that you're doing out there. It's a tough time in schools. It is. It really is. I mean, yeah. you got so much pressure from parents and kids camera guy Josh was a great teacher you just ran away <laughs> I sure did yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are better than me out there That's sure. <laughs> no no he's great but uh, it is a tough time in schools right and teachers are working so hard they are they're they trying sure to are. do the best job they can oftentimes they don't have the resources that they need mm-hmm. 
they're pulling money out of their own pocket. Or the I mean, support that they need. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so true. So we want to take a moment to appreciate our teachers and the fine work that you're doing for our kids. And, you know, I always think of this one teacher that stands out to me. Actually, can you guys all think of a teacher appreciation story? One teacher who had a story and you think of that person when you think of, wow, what great work they do. They, they saw me as an in- individual. Yeah, that's um, easy. And this week, let, let's all share a story. I'll start. Okay. So the one that comes to mind, there's a guy that I had. His name was Mr. Kennedy. And this guy was so cool that uh, he would teach a graphic arts class and so a lot of computer technology. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I discovered that I really want to be on the radio. And this is my passion. And so I was able to get connected with a college radio station. And I wound up (laughs) getting to a point where they were allowing me to do radio shifts during my high school hours. Mm -hmm. Like it was this wild thing. But there were certain days where I wasn't supposed to leave the school and I'd go to Mr. Kennedy. skipping school. Yeah, and I'd go, hey, Mr. Kennedy, if I were really thirsty and I needed to go to the water fountain for like the rest of the class, would you be okay with that? And he's like, go get your drink of water. And then I would leave and I would drive to the radio station and get an opportunity to be there. And he never marked me absent. And I asked him years later, I was like, why did you do that? Like, why did you allow that? He said, well, because I trusted you. I knew that you were getting into something really cool. And when you're a teacher, you have to look at every individual student and you've got to assess each student and say, this is what this person needs. And we knew you were onto something with the radio. And so we wanted to support you. And that's that. impressive as a teacher when you have a classroom of 30, 40 kids. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And I always appreciated that so much because it confirms something in me where I was like, wow, okay, maybe I am onto something here. Like I have this guy's support. He's right. clearly not following the exact rule book yeah. to allow me to do this, but he knew for my situation. And also, I mean, you take one look at me. I mean, I'm sure he t- saw me talking to some girl at some point. He's like, oh, this guy needs help. <laughs> and, you know, whatever is going to help him eventually get into life life and be able to communicate with human beings. Like he's learning how to communicate. Great. Get him on the radio, whatever he's got to do. Your teacher probably knew that you also weren't going to get into any trouble because you were probably super careful and paranoid back then like you are right now. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely stupid in a lot of ways. I mean, I I made some bad choices for sure, but I did have a mom who hammered into my head, Mm -hmm. who was my other teacher, by the way, uh, don't touch anything dumb. And and so I mostly (laughs) did smart choices. I mostly didn't. Yeah. So I always appreciate that. And you know, funny story about Mr. Kennedy years later, like fast forward 20 years in the last year or so. I'm at a bagel store in my hometown and I hear his voice. He, his mm. back is turned to me because he's ordering a bagel, probably in everything because he knows what's that's up. That's the best, baby. And, uh, and I heard his voice and I just recognized it immediately. I'm like, oh, that's Mr. Kennedy. You know, he turns around and we gave each other a hug. That's and awesome. Talk. He was wearing shorts, which he never did in the actual class. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I saw his he's legs. He's living wild now, huh? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's got pretty, I think pretty hairy legs. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I got to take a better look the next time I see him. <laughs> But he was seeing my mom was there and he did the right thing. He made me look really cool in front of my mom. He's like, oh, he was a great kid. You did a great job. He knows all the things to say. (laughs) He's got the teacher playbook. Did you do that camera guy, Josh, when you saw the parents? Oh, yeah, Yeah. absolutely. He's very special. He's gifted. He's smart. You're doing a great job. (laughs) All those. (laughs) So I'm grateful for Mr. Kennedy today and all of our teachers out there doing great work. Saturday was free comic book day. May the 4th be with you, J-Bo. Oh, and with you. How'd you celebrate? Mm, I did groceries. Okay, very good. Not a big Star Wars fan. I'm with you on oh, that. Oh, no. I watched one Star Wars movie, and I was like, this is horrible. But the, Sorry if you're a huge Star Wars <laughs> fan. The concept is you go to a comic book store, and they give you a comic book for free. Now, people take this very seriously. Big day of celebration. Kenny was out at the comic book shops and messing up all the lingo yeah. on purpose. <laughs> Do you think you would be worthy enough to pick up Wonder Woman's hammer? Uh, oh, what? <laughs> Wait, isn't that Thor who has the hammer? Yeah, it's oh. Thor. You know, you have to be worthy to pick up the hammer. <laughs> I, I think we're crossing crossing streams a little bit. I don't understand. <laughs> what do you mean? In the last Thor movie, Wonder Woman was with Thor, and she had the hammer. Uh, I think that's Thor, right? <laughs> was this just fun for you? <laughs> yeah. And Thor is also Marvel, and Wonder Woman's DC. Yeah, so. see? It's all kinds of wrong, J-Bo. Yeah. Am I, am I wrong? Wait, so what... what a, what am I saying wrong? Wait, it's Thor's hammer. Wonder, Wonder Woman's Woman. hammer of truth. <laughs> That's the lasso of truth. Oh. So who was the female character in the last Thor movie? That wasn't Wonder Woman? A female Thor. <laughs> I didn't know there was a female Thor. I thought that was Wonder Woman. I thought they teamed up. No. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll have to double check that. I don't know. I was way off. 
All right. Well, happy holiday. Uh, have, yeah. Happy. I appreciate you clearing up the whole Wonder Woman thing. For oh me. yeah, no problem. All right. Take so, care. Just because he's amusing himself. That's the only reason. If you're that wondering. That guy's so over him. I'm a huge fan of all of these movies. <laughs> and there's this one. The host of the show, TJ. I was trying to explain to him that DC and Marvel they can't coexist. And he's like, why not? He was like a child. Why? Why? And I was trying to explain to him the difference in why you couldn't, they're not in the same universe. Can you help me explain that to him? Yeah, they're two separate universes. You've got DC and Marvel. It would be awesome if we could get a crossover. If there was a president of the comic book society, I mean, he's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's always wanted comic book crossovers with DC and Marvel. But what it do you think? never happen. Why not? That's what he kept on asking. I couldn't give him a good answer. See, that size says it all. It should just be as easy as putting them in the same movie. They can do it. It's the movies. IP properties. Nobody would be able to lock down everybody. They kind of butt heads. Mm. Oh, well, our universe is better than your universe. And it's like, dude, we're all geeks. Let's all just get along and... See, he gets it. Right? Kick some <laughs> Money. Exactly. It, oh, it would be money out the wazoo if they did an Avengers versus the uh, JLA movie. Yeah. Why can't they put their differences aside and give us what we all want? Greed and ego. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, the mouse is going to end up buying everybody, so it'll happen. <laughs> Just leave it to the mouse. Yeah, well, he's not lying about that. He'll take care of it. By the way, producer Heather was at Free Comic Book Day on Saturday, and look, she brought some gifts back for us. That is so sweet. Every Monday, we come in, and it's like, look, who has <laughs> gifts? Gifts every time from Heather. All right, what comic books did you get for us, and why? Yeah. All right, to be fair, they were free, so it wasn't that much of a big deal this time. But anyway, so there was a Mad Magazine. Um, so I got that one for Kenny, because oh, obviously it's funny, you. you know what I mean? Okay. That's a funny one. I got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one for TJ, because oh, I know yes. he wanted it. I yeah, love yeah. the turtles. Yeah. Yep. And then for Josh, there was one called Terms of Service, Understanding Your Role in the Big World of Data. So that one's for Josh, of course. <laughs> That's a comic book? <laughs> that sounds so boring. So, sounds like an instruction manual. I know. And then uh, for j -Bo, I got um, an Encanto, because I know you like Encanto, yes, right? Yes, I yeah. do like Encanto. Which is a Disney uh, a Pixar Disney movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I got. And then I got some comic books for your daughters, TJ, and then one for oh. Mia, Josh's daughter as well. Whoa. Oh, that's oh, so that nice. See, so thoughtful. The most thoughtful person on the show right I'm telling there. telling you. Hopefully you celebrated on Saturday, just like Heather did. This is the TJ Show. j Boy, I survived the weekend. <laughs> Without your wife, Jess? Yeah, my wife, Jess, abandoned me. And she went <laughs> she on. She did a, not abandon you. Well, I don't know what you call it, but she had a little weekend getaway with her friends, a bunch of girlfriends. I think they were like retreating to some mountain somewhere. I bet you she enjoyed herself. Well, yeah, it seemed like it. She was <laughs> <laughs> pretty well rested by my view. And she got back, and I decided I was going to spend a long time really cleaning up the kitchen, like doing a deep clean, every cabinet, every drawer. And, uh, and I did, and I filled up like multiple trash bags with all the stuff that has accumulated. You reorganized the cabinets? Yeah, I did it all. Oh, and that so stresses me out. She comes home, and she <laughs> sees the kitchen, and this is what she says. Wow, it looks so clean in here. And then she moves on. I'm like, oh, man, she totally didn't see all the work that I did. So I had to like keep hinting at her. Uh, hey, can you open uh, up the cabinet? Can you see what you know? Oh wow! And and she never quite fully took the full tour. And so I wound up doing a post game uh, interview with her when she got home to make sure that I I let her know. Hey Jess, welcome back to the neighborhood. Thank you. So you had a weekend getaway with your friends, and I was home with the three girls and two dogs. And uh, how did I do? Well, I came home to a clean house, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. How clean was it? It was really nice. It was like the, the kitchen was sparkling. The refrigerator was clean. See, she did eventually see because I, <laughs> I showed her. Inside the refrigerator. Yep. Take a guess at how long it took me to do that. Mm, five hours. Six. <gasps> Six hours I spent -uh. on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it must be nice that your brother comes down and watches the girls for you, huh? <laughs> well, hold on. No, no, no. I was going to say, there's no way you did that without the girls bothering well, you. Well, hold on or a second. Or not bothering you. My brother happened to be free, and I said, hey, you want to come hang over the weekend? <laughs> and it just so happened, it worked out, as it tends to do, that they were playing board games with him and doing things with Uncle Mike, and I, I had some time to get some things uh -huh. done. So, you happy to see me? Did you miss me at all? Did you think of me once while you were gone? Yes, I thought about you a lot, but I was really busy, and you calling it a weekend getaway. It wasn't really just a getaway. I worked the whole weekend. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. 
Are you kidding? <laughs> yes, I am. See, that was a quick pivot. Did you see Smart that? Smart man. <laughs> yeah, I, of course I was kidding. It was it was a joke. Okay, it was, it was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love you a lot. Great to have you home. Life is a lot better with you home. Yeah, and I'm really happy to be home. I'm happy that you're my home. Did I bring you a little present? Yeah, chocolate. <laughs> Did you love it? It was wonderful. <laughs> Got you a little couple of chocolates. Yep. I think she was really happy to see me again, Jay. But do you hear that? I think there's joy in her yeah, voice. Yeah, she sounds rested. You're a good assessor of joy. Yeah. I, I think um, I think she missed me, and I, I also think she did too. I think she wanted to make me feel loved, so she brought me the chocolate, and right. I, I ate it very quickly like an animal. It was yeah. so good. It was like I, a- I think she also felt joy because the house was like really clean, and the fridge was clean, and she didn't have to be the one to do it. Yeah, no, it's true. And Jabo, this is what my thought process was. I need to do everything I can to set up the return for the most amount of success, even if I don't like doing it. I don't like cleaning yeah. the kitchen, yeah. but I go all in. And I sacrifice right. because I know for sure that she's going to be way happier. And let me tell you, when she came home, it was great. It, yeah. was, it was like a real reuniting. You know when they show those videos on the internet of people who somehow got a hold of lion cubs? And then uh, when they grow up, obviously they have to release them and they come right. back like 20 years later and the lions remember? It was like that, DJ. Yeah, it was like this big <laughs> celebration. I really loved it. The weekend is only two days. Yeah, I know. But for me, it was a long time. And I was so happy that uh, I was able to eventually get her to know how much work I did. Well, I'm happy for you. Yes. Good to be back with you, Jay. Well, I missed you over the weekend, too. <laughs> you didn't clean my fridge, though. Had a big smile on my face when I saw it was National Nurses Day today. It's actually like Nurse Week. Yeah. We've got Teacher Appreciation Week and Nurses Appreciation mm-hmm. Week. and Two professionals that be putting in the work. Yeah. And I had to just bring it up and, and honor our nurses today because the work that you do is so incredible. And I've seen it firsthand in my family. I went through a really tough time. Uh, in 2017, we lost a baby right before he was about to be born. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you that the nurses in that room were like angels to my yeah. family, oh my goodness. I saw what you do in there and I saw what you go through behind closed doors and the way that they navigate some of the hardest situations is so impressive and it made a world of difference. I mean, they were really our comforter, one of our, our many comforters in that time. And Was there something that one of them said or did that stood out to you? I think they were listening mm-hmm. to my wife as she was sharing and what she was going through. And they just were there and they were human. Right. And I think that's the thing. It's like we can look at doctors and nurses sometimes and feel like, oh, you know, how do you relate? to all that schooling or how do you relate but I mean when I tell you it felt like they were all buddies we, we tried to become friends with some of them actually after because yeah. we, we felt <laughs> right, so touched so they've got plenty of friends you know they don't need but no they were wonderful and some of them I, I will still run into them even today I'm tr- the last time I saw one of those nurses we were in a train in Boston and we recognized each other right away and she wow. was with her daughter hey oh, you were in that room yeah. oh my goodness hey it's so great to see you and it really feels like they're an extension of our family Family. We still remember those people. I can remember what they look like because of the work that they did, especially with what we were going through. Also, my aunt is a nurse, and uh, she used to be a photographer, and then she seemingly just got fed up with the industry and said, listen, all you need is one working eye to take a photo. It's nothing that special. And then she left. <laughs> oh. and she, she goes, she goes uh, she's doing something way more fulfilling now, and she's doing incredible work, too. No, going back to what you said, TJ, you said sometimes you feel like, oh, how can I connect with the nurse when they, know all this, they have all this knowledge and schooling? my thought process is like how do I know they care about me when they deal with so many people yes. every single day yep. but somehow whenever I interact with a nurse in a situation whether I'm at a hospital or a doctor's appointment it's like they manage to just focus in on you yeah. and everything you have to say everything you're going through is important to them absolutely you know I think of um, someone who was like a nurse she's a therapist and she dealt with a lot of grief mm-hmm. and I asked her that very question because she's seeing people constantly it's like mm-hmm. a revolving door and I said how do you separate the people yeah, and like, like does it all do become care? what and she told me she's like before every session she just sits there and thinks about being on the beach and she resets her mind mm-hmm. so that she can really focus on that next person and like start from that next and I was like oh that's really interesting like she has a process for yeah. what you just asked that's awesome and uh, yeah and it's it's amazing and I just am so grateful for the work that they do yes Kenny I have a cousin who's a nurse who I think has been ignoring me because every time I see her I'm like showing her something on my back it's like what is this yeah, is this yeah, gross yeah, she's over is it is this okay yeah it's really gross I think about that uh, they endure 
their friends. I mean, yeah. being a nurse, it's not just what's going on in the operating room and right. at the hospital. It's your friends you have to deal with all mm-hmm. the time. You're given free medical advice. You did all the schooling and right. the work, and now Kenny wants you to look at his back. Kenny, you better watch out. Your cousin's going to start invoicing you. Yeah, but please keep uh, offering your services in that way because I've been helped a couple <laughs> times. And I'd much rather do that unofficially than having to go to the doctor and all that madness. So well, they're wonderful. I have a new nephew. My brother and sister-in-law have her number on speed dial. They're constantly calling her <laughs> Great. about the baby. Yeah. Good. Yeah, keep it up. Good job. Last night, a lot of hype around this Tom Brady roast. First of all, it was live on Netflix, which was a pretty cool concept. I had very high hopes for it. I didn't get a chance to watch it. It was on way too late for me. But Kenny and camera guy Josh watched it. And you guys don't seem like you were all that impressed. Well, I mean, there were plenty of laughs for me. But again, I don't. I wouldn't rank it as you know top five or even top ten roasts that I've seen. Yeah, and you pointed out earlier without the editing, because oftentimes when we see these roasts, they're picking the very best of the best, and a lot of the jokes never even hit the air. Yeah, exactly. And maybe there's something to that. Conde- <laughs> to <think laughs> condensing right. it. You know, you just go back to that. Just turn the camera on for three hours. You're like, huh? All right. Were there any standouts as far as the comics go? Jeff Ross, uh, Well, Jeff Ross, yeah. he's the roast master, right? They call him the roast master general. He opened the show. Um, apparently, and I don't know how real this was, but he made a joke at Robert Kraft's expense, and Tom Brady got up out of his chair and then went to Jeff Ross's ear and said, don't say that blank again. Really? Like right from the top of the show? Yeah, at the beginning. Well, I guess it was towards the end of Jeff Ross's set. That's a weird tone to say. Do they know that he said that or that's what they're speculating? No, you heard it on the microphone. Oh, wow. He oh, went like wow. he was going to like whisper it to his ear, but the microphone picked it up and you heard. He said, don't say that blank again. So defending him. Defending Robert Kraft after a joke involving one of his scandals. Well, mm. I didn't watch the roast, but I remember the trailer stating like Tom Brady was like, I'm unroastable. I'm assuming he was very roastable. <laughs> well, it sounds like, night. yeah, he... He got offended, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, but he didn't seem to get offended by all the Giselle jokes. I mean, there were so many Giselle jokes about his divorce and, you know, leaving his family for football and and whatnot. They didn't hold back. You got to give him credit for being willing to endure that. Because you don't know, you don't know what people are going to say, yeah. and you know, sometimes I'm sure that pain still has to be a little bit raw. Yeah, I, I guess roast can definitely be fun. When I feel bad for the people is when they just plaster a smile on their face, yeah. and you know they're just like, mm, just smile yeah, through it. Did you get forcing it? themselves through it? Did you get any of that kind of vibe, or do you think he was genuinely having a good time? I think for the most part he was having a good time, but Kevin Hart actually called him out saying, look at his face, his lip is quivering. So <laughs> there was some instances. And then anytime they shot to Tom Brady after a particularly rough joke, he seemed to take a sip of something. So I feel like he might have been masking with whatever mm. drink he had in his Oh, hand. wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, camera guy Josh was such a big Tom Brady fan, still is, that you watched it on a plane. You were flying last was, night. You yeah. had to see it. I paid seven ninety nine for the in-flight Wi-Fi so I could watch this yeah, thing. And you seem very disappointed. Yeah, I was. I am. What yeah. would you say was the biggest takeaway for why you didn't like it? Uh, it was just vulgar. I mean, it was just over the top. I didn't want to sit through all that. I'm the nerd who doesn't like that stuff. So I was like, eh, okay, I guess it's funny. It just sounded like, you know, when you first learn these words and you say <laughs> yes. them all the time and uh-huh. that's why it's funny. It, it yeah. sounded like that. It's like, oh, we can say this word. We can say this. That was me as a teen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, ha, 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 yeah. ha, 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 <laughs> yeah. ha. It just, it didn't seem clever. Yeah, Josh was telling me he was watching on his phone in the airplane seat, hoping the nice woman next to him couldn't read lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I kept turning my phone away, even though it was just video of someone talking. I didn't want her to see and be able to read the lips. I kept turning the volume down in my headphones, hoping no one else on this plane could hear what was coming through my ears. It, so, was, it was unbelievable. Mixed reviews. I'm glad and, I didn't miss anything good. Yeah, I, I guess uh, it's not as exciting as I thought. This is the TJ Show. This is the TJ Show, our news that sounds a whole lot different around here. Kenny reads through every story he can find, and then he brings us the most interesting ones. Kenny, what's happening on the planet today? The Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, was number one at North American box offices in its opening weekend, bringing in $28.5 million. Is that a serious movie, or is it like a comedy? It's a comedy action movie, from what I understand, and it's based on a TV show from the 80s, The Fall Guy, which was about a stuntman who got involved in bounty hunting. Oh, that's cool. Producer Heather saw that movie. 
It was funny. I liked it.、Uh, I think Ryan Gosling kind of played into like the kind of the Ken character almost. Like, I, but I think that's just kind of how he plays like sarcastic, dumb type. But it was really funny. I enjoyed it. Good, good. Hey, it sounds fun. Yeah, now it did do slightly worse than projections. They expected 30 to 35 million in the opening weekend. The film's budget was 130 million.、Whoa. It's got great reviews. So they're thinking that in the coming weeks, with word of mouth, that more and more people will go to see this movie. But I think even more news making over the weekend at the box office the re release of Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, for its 25th anniversary, came in second place, bringing in $8.1 million in North America. That's an incredible. Incredible story. Yeah. Here, here they took a movie that was out once and just re released it. Exactly. Maybe to a lot of people who never saw it in the theater. And you just get $8 million from doing that? <laughs> Printing money. That's amazing. The work's <laughs> already、that. done. Yeah. And you know something? I remember when that movie first came out, it got trashed. But it appears that people have come around on that film. Huh. Like it's now kind of resurged and it's talked about in a positive light for the most part. Yeah, I remember when it came out. And、uh, I mean, I was bored with all of Star Wars, but it, no one liked it. Yeah. Who was a fan of Star Wars at that time? That's fascinating. I wonder if Terminator 2 will hit the big screen again. I mean, it makes sense, right? There's whole generations of moviegoers who have not seen these movies in the theater. Well, when's the anniversary of Terminator 2? I don't know. Yeah, I gotta keep my eyes、up. on that. What's next, Kenny? On Saturday, it was the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. Mystic Dan entered the race with 18 to 1 odds and finished in first place. And you bet on Mystic Dan, right? I did. How did you know to do that? I didn't know anything other than I have a very good friend named Dan,、mm. and I said,、hmm, let's throw two bucks on Mystic Dan. And yeah, with 18 to 1 odds, I won close to $50. Wow. That's very mystic. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's what tends to happen with these bets. People try to figure out what's the smartest bet I can make. Eh, let's just, I got a friend named Dan. Let's go for it. <laughs> well, for instance, Fierceness was the favorite heading into the race. It finished 15. Out of 20. What? Aww. So, a bad I mean, day. Y- you, never, you never know exactly how these things will shake out. But this was an interesting race because it was a three horse photo finish. So, Mystic Dan had the lead heading into the final stretch with Sierra Leone and Forever Young quickly gaining ground as they head to the finish line. And indeed, it was by a nose, as they say.、Hmm. Mystic Dan was one nose ahead of Sierra Leone, who was one nose ahead. Head of Forever Young. It took several minutes for them to work out who won this race because it was that、fun. close. Imagine being the photographer who caught that.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, you、great. get to go and frame by frame.、It's、super cool.、That's、They cool. say it was the closest three horse photo finish since 1947 and just the 10th Kentucky Derby decided by a nose. Wow.、Oof. Awesome story there. That's cool. Kenny,、yeah, really、what else、cool. do you have? Is this wrong? In England, there's a man who is sick and tired of people walking across his well manicured lawn. So he came up with a way to deter people from stepping on his grass by setting up a powerful automatic sprinkler that will soak people who touch his grass. <laughs> well, it's a whole、That's, new level of get off my lawn. That、yeah. is hilarious. And、uh, sounds like TikTok material. In、oh, today's well, world, well, that's where it is. It's got millions upon millions of views. People are, are stitching it, so making videos based on <laughs> this guy's video. Oh, so he did put it on TikTok.、Uh, he did put yeah, it on, on TikTok.、Um, although he deleted it, and now it's just recirculating because people are you know, using the original video and creating new videos based on. That video, but、oh, I wonder why he deleted it. It's got mixed reviews. Some people are saying it's absolute genius, other people are saying it's petty and cruel. So、mm. I, I wanted to know where do、oh, you guys stand on this? It's definitely petty, but it's funny. <laughs> well, you try to take shortcuts in life, your pants are going to get wet. <laughs> yeah. That, that's old philosophy. <laughs> that the old saying?、Right、yeah. I'm pretty sure、yeah. it's something like that. I don't know what philosopher said that, but that's pretty good. <laughs> Kenny, what else do you have? I want to tell you about Malia Martinez. She's an 11 year old from Massachusetts. She learned how to sew after getting a Christmas gift for sewing lessons. And she's a dog lover. She often goes to these events、uh, with shelters, trying to adopt animals that need homes. And she thought to herself, why not create adorable bandanas for dogs and cats and use them to help support these animal shelters? And that's what she's been doing for the last year, selling these bandanas anywhere from three to seven dollars. And she's raising hundreds of dollars that she's just. Turning over to、um, these local animal shelters. Most recently, she donated more than $200 to the Kingston Animal Shelter in Massachusetts. That's, That's amazing.、So awesome. 
An animal is cute on its own, but with a bandana, mm-hmm. next level cuteness. That's right. Yeah. We got our puppy. It had a bandana on. I was like, oh, I didn't know you were even that cute. And you sent me a photo, and Frankie Furball, that's a puppy's name, had the bandana on. I was like, oh, my goodness, how right. cute is that? The bandana really took her yeah, over the top. Yeah, it did. Kenny, what else do you have? Elephants are really smart. I mean, they literally have big brains and big hearts, too, for that matter. And it appears that their hearts are big figuratively as well. At a zoo in China... A child's shoe fell into the elephant enclosure, and video shows the elephant picking up the shoe with its trunk, at first trying to eat it, then realizing it wasn't food, he returned the shoe back to its owner. He gave it back to the little kid. That is remarkable. I wonder what's going on there. Is it an accident? Was it done on purpose? Now he's got clutter in his enclosure, and okay, Doesn't if want I, it I there. can't eat I don't want this, this like, all right, take this back, get, get this out of my Yeah, I guess the question room. is, did he intentionally give it back knowing it was his, and he wanted to do a nice thing? Yeah, I, I don't know, but he did get a nice reward for his good behavior. They gave him a whole watermelon to chomp down. Aww. <laughs> Kenny, what's, what else is going on? A team of Japanese researchers launched a study to see if there was any connection between watching sports and a person's well-being, physically and mentally. Let me guess, there is... Yeah, that's what they found, Jabo. I would hope so. I feel good when I watch sports and my team's winning. Yeah, they said they found watching sports activated brain reward circuits Hmm. through uh, brain imaging scans while they had their participants watching sports. They also found that watching sports fosters community and belonging, which benefits both individuals and their society. I guess we're unified, right, on one team or another. And especially in the crowd, you know what that feels like, right? You go to the games all the time. Yeah, yeah it feels I, awesome. I know the opposite. I wonder if they studied any Jets fans, because I'm, yeah. not, I'm not so sure <laughs> that this is across the board true. Let's assume it's the opposite of that feel-good feeling. But actually, that that aside, there is a feeling of connection and community, and of course, the Jets in particular. For me and my family, it's a huge bonding experience for my dad, my mom, my brother and sister. So I, I can buy into this a little bit and they have some science behind it to prove it. Hey, listen, I think it's clear that we're supposed to be doing life together. Yeah, and another interesting part of this study, it dove into whether or not particular sports offered more or less benefits than other sports. And it did find that the more popular sports like football, baseball, basketball had a more significant impact on enhancing well-being compared to those Less popular sports like golf or tennis. Yeah, I would imagine golf would be worse for people. (laughs) It's just so boring. Kenny, what else do you have? Google is going to be introducing audio emojis to the Google phone, according to an article in 9to5Google. It appears there will be six types of audio emojis that what you can use. Mean? So I guess while you're on the phone with somebody using a Google phone, you could press a button that will then play sound of what I guess the emoji is representing visually, but in audio form. So like a sound effect. Yeah. It's, so they have clapping, laughing, oh my goodness. party, crying, <laughs> that sounds a fun. drum, and they have the duty emoji that apparently will play the sound Aww. of passing wind wow. <laughs> when you press the button. The, so now... Everything we do is going to sound like an old wacky radio show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this is bizarre. They'll keep phone calls more entertaining, I'll tell you that. Now, <laughs> one thing I should note is that there does appear to be a cool down period, so you can't just press the duty emoji over and over and over again and keep making those noises. Right. Like, it slows you down. So I guess they're trying to prevent that wacky radio show sound on the phone. Well, I'm glad that Google has some maturity. In this new technology. Just some. <laughs> it hasn't been announced officially yet, um, but we've seen screenshots circulating on social media. The Google's annual developer conference is taking place in a few weeks, so we're expecting more information then. I know this is going to sound really weird and out there, but like, are we slow boiling to a point where we can't communicate on our own anymore? Where we're becoming reliant on other things like emojis speaking for us and, you know, not having to type, we're talking to type. It just seems like we're getting further and further away from being able to communicate on our own. Yeah, we might be. I mean, there are positives and negatives uh, when it comes to emojis and these alternate forms of communications. A lot of people say emojis are universal. So it's a way of bringing people together, especially for those who don't speak the same language. Mm. But I see where you're coming from. I mean, English language, grammar, spelling, it all appears to be disappearing. People don't know how to write or 
write in cursive anymore. It's, yeah. It's interesting for Kenny, sure. Kenny, what else do you have? A man from Mexico bought a pair of gold and diamond Cartier earrings worth $13,600. He paid only $13 because of an apparent website glitch. Ooh, wow. what a come up. Good for him. That's surprising that that could even happen. Man. Yeah, and apparently Cartier reached out to the man saying, hey, we can't sell you these earrings. That was a mistake. But the man didn't take that. They offered him a bottle of champagne and a card holder as a gift for their apology. <laughs> no, I want the earrings. I paid $13 but for But he goes do. ahead and reviews the terms and conditions on Cartier Mexico's website. This is a, a, a Mexican man who did this. And learned that the band directs customers to the office of the federal prosecutor for the consumer if they have issues with orders. So he goes to the Federal Com- Consumer Protection Agency, citing one of these consumer protection laws. Uh, apparently, the Consumer Protection Agency then reached out to Cartier, and Cartier, not wanting to go to court over this, just said, okay, have the earrings. Wow. I mean, he read the terms and conditions. That's what they're there for. Yeah, I guess they could work in our favor sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, so he says he's got two pairs of these earrings for 13 bucks. He's giving a pair to his mother because she deserves them. Mother's Day is next week. Yeah, so that's a big perfect score. timing. He's keeping another pair for himself. Kenny, thanks for keeping us somewhat informed. That's what's happening. I thought I did well at the Apple deal I got at the grocery store. It was 97 cents a pound for honey crisps. Oh, no. I, I couldn't believe I got away with it. And they actually agreed to that. <laughs> Bigger heights that we can get to. That's right. Yeah. 